What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Ryan here and today we're going to talk about the Go language versus the Rust language and which one is better because no two languages can coexist and be complementary. They There's got to be one that's better, right? <laughs> So when it comes to comparing languages, there's a few things I think about. So number one is market, which means can I get a job with this language, right? If I'm learning Haskell or the D programming language, probably going to be hard to get a job. If you're learning JavaScript or Python or something else, right, it's easier to get a job in certain markets. The next thing I think about is productivity. Am I going to be able to get stuff done in a reasonable amount of time or am I going to be wrestling with the language? Then I think about safety. Once I get stuff done, am I going to have to come back a week later because everything's breaking apart because of bugs? So then I think about performance. Now, performance is kind of taken more seriously than it should be, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Then I think about collaboration. Like if I'm onboarding engineers onto a project and they need to get up to speed, how tough is it going to be to use Go versus Rust? Then the last thing I think about is ecosystem. So this is everything outside of the language itself, the code. So it's probably a good idea for you to know a little bit about me and my background. At this point in time, I've used about 15 programming languages. Now, when it comes to Golang, I've been using that when working at startups for the last few years. And when it comes to Rust, I actually picked that up a few months ago as a hobby. So one thing I want to talk about when it comes to programming languages is tribalism. So gophers are all about simplicity. The biggest feature of Go is the lack of features in Go. That's what people love about Go. On the other hand, Rustations value safety. So there's this concept of safe and unsafe code in Rust, and that's not a subjective thing that you just feel. It's actually, uh, there's an objective definition for what safe and unsafe is. So now let's get into the nitty gritty of this. So the question is, can I get a job with this language? So if you go with Golang, there's gonna be plenty of jobs to apply for. There's multiple new jobs being posted every week. When it comes to Rust, on the other hand, there's maybe a few jobs per month posted for Rust. So it's gonna be a little tougher to find a gig if you're sticking to Rust. I've noticed that both languages generally require a senior level of experience. So regardless, you're probably going to need to have a couple years of experience under your belt as a software engineer before you can land a job with either Go or Rust. So overall, I'd say in terms of market, Go is the clear winner. If you want to make money, learn Go. So the next thing I think about is productivity, which means am I going to be able to get stuff done in a reasonable amount of time and meet my deadlines? So Go is very simple. There's a lot of things you can't do in Go. It makes it pretty easy to work with and you can move pretty quickly with Go. So then there's Go routines, which is an abstraction for threads, which makes multi-threading ridiculously easy in Go. Then aside from that, being a garbage collected language is actually beneficial when it comes to productivity because it means I don't have to worry about if this object is going to go out of scope and get destroyed and uh, it gives you a lot more flexibility over how you structure your code so rust is deceptively simple at first you look at it and it's like okay there's variables and functions and traits all this seems pretty simple and then you start working with references and mutability and asynchronous run times and the fact that it's not garbage collected means that you do have to worry about if an object is going to go out of scope. So it's not like any of these concepts are all that difficult to grasp. I mean, they are a little tricky, but it's more when you combine the effect of all of those things together, it becomes a real drag sometimes just to get a simple application working in Rust. So when it comes to productivity, Golang is undoubtedly the winner here. Now I know some of you Rustations are going to get all riled up and be like, well, I'm fast and you just need to get better at Rust. It's not just about me. There's a bigger picture to this and I'll talk about that later too. So here's an example of a really basic data structure in Go. We have something called thing. It has a pointer to another thing, which has a value. And then we have increment. We'll just check if that's null. And then if not, then we increment it. So one thing I'll say is that if we forget to check if this is nil, then really bad things can happen. 
So here's an example of doing the same thing in Rust. So here we have a thing and then we have a reference to the other thing. Now you'll notice two things here. One, we have to declare this as mutable because at some point we want to change it. Then we have to add this lifetime annotation to the reference. We also have to add the lifetime annotation to the outer struct and we have to add it to the implementation block. Here we have to declare self as mutable because mutability in Rust is kind of recursive, like the child and the parent have to both be mutable in order to mutate the child. And then we can finally increment it. You can see something that's kind of simple becomes very complicated as soon as you decide to use references. So after you've been productive and all that and you're pushing code to production, the next thing you want to think about is safety. So will my code have bugs? Well, in the context of Go, Go doesn't really force you to handle errors. It kind of exposes them to you, but you don't necessarily have to handle them. Go does allow you to have null pointers. And as we saw earlier, that can be kind of problematic if you forget to handle those. So for the most part in Go, safety is enforced through good coding practices and test-driven development. So here's an example of error handling in Go, or rather not handling errors in Go. We have a result, and then you can see after that, the underscore is where we were supposed to expose the error, but instead we chose to ignore it. And yeah, bad things will happen probably. Whereas in this case, we are properly handling the error. We're exposing it, and we have a check for it, and then we're doing some stuff with it. So when it comes to Rust, it paints an entirely different picture because Rust forces you to handle every possible code path. Rust has something called option, which is basically a replacement for null. So in the case of Rust, safety is enforced by the compiler and you don't have to have really rigid coding practices because the compiler is going to beat you into submission until your code is correct. That's not to say that you're not gonna have any bugs, right? The compiler doesn't know what you as a programmer want to do, but it is going to eliminate a certain class of bugs that is very common in programming. So here's an example of error handling in Rust. So we do a thing, it returns a result, and there's this thing called match, which forces you to unpack the result into two different branches of logic. One is okay, where we get the actual result, and the other one is your error. And it's not that Rust forces you to handle the error, but it does force you to unpack it and at least acknowledge it. So if you're scrolling through code and you see this, it's pretty obvious what the problem is. So when it comes to comparing the safety between Rust and Go, yeah, Rust is definitely the way to go. So if you're gonna write the firmware for a rocket engine or the code that deploys an airbag in a car, you know, mission critical code, uh, then Rust is definitely above and beyond compared to other general purpose programming languages. So when it comes to performance, both Go and Rust are probably fast enough for whatever you're trying to do. But when it comes to deterministic performance, that's where Rust kicks in because garbage collection means that at some point, the runtime is gonna have to go through and grab all the references and figure out what needs to be released from memory. And Rust doesn't have that. Rust doesn't have garbage collection. So with Rust, you end up with more consistent performance. So Rust would be the better choice if you were running, say, a real-time physics simulation or a game engine or an audio synthesizer or something that needs to run at a high frequency and you can't afford to have stutters in that experience. So if you have memory or storage constraints on your system, that's also a case where Rust can be an advantage. So yeah, in this case, Rust is the clear winner. If performance is important and you absolutely need to squeeze the utmost like nanoseconds out of your code, then yeah, go for Rust. So the next thing I think about is collaboration. So should I use this language in my team or company? And if I do, what kind of challenges might that bring? I think Go, depending on your background, you can become proficient in Go pretty quickly, probably within a matter of weeks. On the other hand, when it comes to Rust, it's gonna be a steeper, much steeper learning curve. Don't be surprised if it takes months to get up to speed and become proficient at using Rust. So in the category of collaboration, you know, teamwork and onboarding, Go is definitely the winner here. If you're starting a fresh project and you intend to bring other engineers on board to help, you know, speed that up, Go is the way to go. So the last thing I want to talk about is ecosystem. So this is all the resources outside of the programming language itself. 
So this includes package manager. So with Go, for example, it uses something called Go modules. Uh, the standard library is pretty solid. Like you'll be surprised at how seldom you need to actually use third party libraries because mostly you can do everything you need to do with the standard library. And the documentation is pretty good. So when it comes to Rust, it uses the Cargo Package Manager, which is pretty solid. I have no complaints about that. The standard library is pretty decent, but you will need to use third-party libraries pretty often. For example, encoding and decoding, serialization and deserialization. That's not necessarily a problem. It's just the way you have to do things. A side effect of the language being kind of difficult is that the documentation sometimes doesn't explain the concepts enough for you to be able to understand it. But overall, I would say both Go and Rust are pretty much on par in terms of the ecosystem. Okay, so the last, last thing I want to talk about, this is number 6.5, is use case. Like, what should I do with this language? Because in truth, every language is not suitable for every use case. Like, if I want to write a server, I'm not going to do that in C. And if I want to make a high-performance 3D game, I'm not going to do that in Python. So in terms of Go, Golang is mainly used for networking, microservices, building backend API systems for, you know, a software as a service platform and things like that. This is an area where you're going to work more with high level code. You're not going to get too bogged down into the bits and bytes of everything. Whereas Rust is typically used for the bits and the bytes. It's used for a lot of development tooling. It's used for any low level stuff you're going to do at the operating system or kernel level. Uh, if you're going to write a database, you probably want to do it in Rust because, you know, a database is no joke, right? It needs to be fast. It needs to be safe. So when you look at the use cases between these two, you can see that these languages are not really competing against each other. It, they kind of do well in different areas. So when it comes to comparing Go and Rust, it's not really a clear cut picture. For example, when it comes to the market, if you want to get a job, use Go. If you want to be productive and get stuff done quickly, you should also use Go. But when it comes to safety, you should definitely choose Rust because it's going to force you to write your code in a safe way. When it comes to performance, if you absolutely want to squeeze the utmost performance, then Rust is going to be the way to go as well. Then when it comes to collaboration and considering that other engineers are going to need to learn this language and get up to speed, well, Go is the winner in that category. Then when it comes to ecosystem, both languages are pretty much on par, so we give that a tie. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that helps you choose between Go and Rust if you're on the fence. Let me know in the comments below what you think is the better language for you. And if you want to argue with me, hit me up on Twitter at Ryan Codes. So as usual, please like and subscribe, support a little YouTuber like myself, and thank you for watching.